What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's story is about Azumi Muto and her brother Yuki, and how their family was torn apart forever when one of them decided to murder the other. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you have siblings, like myself, we've all gotten into fights. I mean, we're only human. And I know there's many times when we've gotten very angry at our siblings or our loved ones, and you know, we wanted to get back at them or hurt them or make them feel bad because they made us feel bad. But nothing quite like this. This is the story of the Muto family, which was a family of dentists and wealthy business owners. They owned a lot of land. And Izumi and her brother Yuki were two children in that family that did not get along very well. Despite having different dreams and career paths ahead of them, I mean, heck, they didn't even have to worry about their careers, I mean, to be honest. If they wanted to, both of them could just never work for the rest of their lives due to their family just being so wealthy and successful. But with all that success doesn't always mean happiness, and this story just proves that. So as we're going through today's story, I want you guys to just think about what could bring a brother to murder his sister and then hide her body in his own room, only to be found by the parents later. This story is truly messed up, and I must warn you, as always, it's not for the faint of heart. So without further ado, grab a coffee, grab a snack, grab a buddy, and let's begin. As I've already mentioned, this story is all about the Mudo family. They were a wealthy, well-educated family filled with dentists. And this ranged from generations with their grandparents who started up this dentist business all the way in the 50s in Shibuya, Japan, and eventually their kids became dentists, and those kids, which were Mudo and Yuki's parents, wanted them to be dentists as well. Now let's talk about the kids for a second. There was Azumi, who was the youngest daughter, there was Yuki, the middle brother, and there was an elder brother who, no surprise, was a dentist. But Azumi didn't want to just be a dentist like everybody else. She wanted to do something more, something different. But she couldn't exactly decide what. She had thoughts about becoming a computer programmer and a model and possibly even an actress. And so she didn't want to follow in the footsteps of her grandparents and then her parents and then other relatives who all were dentists. Yuki, on the other hand, seemed to want nothing more than to become a dentist. But because these two siblings were both struggling with their different career paths and their different aspirations and dreams, and they were constantly butting heads with each other, it eventually led to Yuki murdering Azumi and then cutting up her body into pieces and eventually hid the remains in his closet, only to be found by his family days later. Before we get too into it, guys, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Bloodline, Heroes of Lithus. Free to play on both Android and iOS. Bloodline is a card-based fantasy RPG with realistic 3D graphics, where you can not only collect champions and build kingdoms, but also create legendary heirs and houses by combining forces of various bloodlines such as orcs, lycons, demons, and dragonborn. The game features a traditional western fantasy in visually stunning 3D realistic graphics. Enjoy an amazing mobile experience and relax yourself with easy controls on a vertical screen. Kind of like a unique gacha gameplay experience. Choose your path by raising heirs with true companions from a vast fantasy world. You can also customize your champions by marrying different bloodlines until you find a unique combination of any five powerful abilities out of dozens of traits that suits your own need for gameplay. The possibilities are endless. This is basically a card game, strategy game, economy, and romance simulator in one. Like, there's a lot to do. There are awesome champions to play such as the Lycans, a super cool werewolf clan, or the Karg, also known as the Dragonborn, which you can play for free right now, along with amazing champions that you can choose to marry like the Fulgur Demigods of Thunder. You can also switch genders of your companion at any time, and the more you level up, the more companions you have to choose from. And what's really cool about this game is the higher your intimacy level is with your companion, the stronger your offspring become. Like look at this Dragonborn Demigod baby, how cool is that? Create even stronger offspring by marrying champions and keep developing the family tree until your champion inherits the best traits from their parents. Bloodline Heroes of Lithus is free to play now on Android and iOS, and if you guys use my link in the description or this barcode here, you can obtain a half dragonborn, half demigod heir for free, plus one champion token and 100,000 gold coins and diamonds. You're not going to get a better offer than that, so just scan this barcode or use my link down below to start playing today. Now, let's talk about how all of this came to be and what really pushed Yuki over the edge. It all starts in 1986, June 13th. Azumi was born as the youngest of three kids. As we've already mentioned, there was the middle brother Yuki, 
and the elder brother. And the Mudo family was filled with dentists, and this ranged all the way back from the 1950s when their grandparents had founded the company. When it eventually came time for Azumi and Yuki to focus on their careers, they wanted to go in totally different directions paths. Yuki wanted to become a dentist, just like everybody in his family. Azumi, on the other hand, wanted to do computer programming and acting and modeling and something that her family had never done nor really seen before. Azumi had the looks, the charm, and the personality on her side, and for a time she actually did find some success. Despite her family not agreeing with her career path and wanting her to stick with dentistry, Azumi eventually got frustrated and decided to leave home when she was 18 years old. She even created a stage name for herself and began acting and taking small roles. She actually did get cast for a small role in a film called Cream Lemon, which was based on an anime, but uh, it was a kind of a mature anime, a little bit risque from what I've read. So obviously when her parents found out about that, they did not like that at all. This only further pushed Azumi into frustration, and with no support from her family financially at this time, eventually she was forced to come back home. And while all of this was going on, Yuki was trying his hardest to pass his dentist exam, and he had already tried several times, three times to be exact, and he was now getting ready for his fourth attempt. You see, Yuki wanted to continue in his parents and his families and his relatives footsteps and he really wanted nothing more than to become a dentist. He wanted not to stand out, he wanted to do what everyone in his family was doing, and he wanted to succeed at it. But he was having trouble doing so. Even though he wasn't having the best of luck with his desire to become a dentist, Yuki had big dreams for the future. For example, he wanted to do things like plant grass and create gardens and help the environment and he wanted to do these things when he was successful and had the income. And all in all, it seemed like Yuki really did have good, genuine intentions to do things for the greater good whenever he would become a dentist in the future. However, because he had such big dreams and goals, that were just not coming to fruition, it only further frustrated him. And because Azumi also had big dreams and goals that were not coming to fruition, it was only frustrating her. And because these two siblings were sort of butting heads, both trying to achieve two different careers but having trouble doing so, they would constantly and naturally fight with each other. Now, since we've already talked about Azumi a bit, let's talk a little bit about Yuki. Yuki wasn't quite like his sister, nor his elder brother, nor really anyone else in his family. He was quiet, shy, reserved, and pretty much a loner. Friends of Azumi would often say that he was weird, or he was creepy, and they don't know what he's thinking, and they don't want to be around him because he makes them feel uncomfortable. And this is coming from Azumi's friends, who are saying this about her brother. So, you can probably imagine he's maybe not the best with people, maybe he's not the most sociable, but okay, understandable. He's working really hard on his dreams and his goals, and he really wants to be a dentist. So maybe he's putting all of his time into studying and, I don't know, sort of being a recluse, you know, just putting all his effort into studies. However, it wasn't just Azumi's friends that had these thoughts and opinions about Yuki. There were other people from the neighborhood that would make similar comments. Some of them being that Yuki possibly took a liking to Azumi because of the way he peered at her sometimes and watched her. And this made people uncomfortable because they thought that maybe there was something wrong with Yuki and maybe there was some kind of thing going on between the two. But of course, this was just speculation. There was no proof of this. Well, at least not yet. Azumi did make note that she did feel uncomfortable about her brother days before she died. And she said this was probably due to him being worried about his exam coming up for the fourth time. And now we move on to December 30th, 2006. Both Azumi and Yuki were left at home for a few days while their parents and brother were visiting other family members in Fukushima, and this was during a Christmas and New Year's celebration. I believe the reason that Yuki and Azumi stayed home is because Azumi wanted to focus on what she was doing, you know, her modeling, acting, and programming, and Yuki wanted to focus on his fourth and final, well, hopefully final attempt at 
the dentistry exams. And so they decided not to go to this party with the family and meet everybody, but they decided to stay at home and focus on their goals. This, unfortunately, ended up being the worst mistake both of them could have made. It was around 3 p.m. on that day, and Izumi was talking to Yuki about his next dental exam. And from Yuki's own confession, he said that she was upsetting him because she was talking about how he wasn't going to do well again, and how he had failed three times in the past, and how he couldn't amount to anything. And while this might not all be true because we only have Yuki's confession to go off of, this sparked rage between the two, more so from Yuki. And so, shortly after this little exchange, Yuki went into the other room and he picked up a kendo sword. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like a katana sword, but it's wooden, it's not real, but it's still a weapon. Yuki then went into the other room where Izumi was, and he began bashing his sister over the head with the kendo sword again and again and again. Azumi's face was swollen and covered in bruises, but she did her best to fight back. Yuki told authorities during his confession that while she was continuing to fight back, she also continued to berate him and make fun of him and tell him that he had no purpose in life and he was only doing this because his parents and his family wanted him to do it. Meanwhile, she was doing what she truly wanted, and all this did was only make Yuki even angrier. It was then that Yuki grabbed a towel and put it over Azumi's face and began to strangle her. But what's really strange is that in Yuki's confession, he said that he killed her in order to shut her up, in order to make her stop talking so that he wouldn't feel as bad. And I think this just kind of speaks to the mental condition that Yuki was in at this time. Clearly his mental state had deteriorated so much that he couldn't differentiate such a horrible excuse to kill somebody versus not to. From watching a TV show, Yuki also remembered that if you strangle somebody for 180 seconds, they will die. And so, that's what he did. He continued choking Izumi and counted to 180. After he was done counting, Azumi was still breathing. She was still alive. And so Yuki realized that his work wasn't done. And so he took Azumi's body into the bathroom and he put her in the tub. He turned on the water and filled it to the top. And he held Azumi's head under the water until she drowned. After Azumi had finally passed away, there was blood all over the floor and all over the place and probably all over Yuki because remember he was bashing her in the face with the kendo and she probably had bruises and blood coming out of her nose and cuts on her face and who knows what else. Fortunately for Yuki this actually worked out well for his plan. Yuki then went to a different part of the house and got a knife and a saw. He then went back to the bathroom and started dismembering Azumi's body so that he could dispose of it. And what's truly sickening about this part is not only did Yuki cut off the limbs, but he also cut off, you know, her women parts. And not just on the torso, but also in the private areas. And the reason he did this, according to his confession, is so that authorities would not be able to identify if the body was male or female. But I think that's still not the greatest strategy because couldn't they have just done a DNA test? I mean, it was 2006 and we've had DNA tests for a lot longer than that, so I don't think that really would have done much unless he really got rid of the rest of the remains. But did he? After Yuki was done with his work, he then had to clean up the bathroom. And as I said earlier, the bathrooms in Japan and as well as Korea and a lot of Asian countries are basically uh, waterproof all over. So you could easily just take the shower and spray the walls and spray all over the floor, the toilet, whatever, and it would all just wash away. Yuki placed the remains of the body inside four different garbage bags, and he hid them in his closet. And then, after that, he finally left the house to go to his study camp. And this is basically a place he would go to for days at a time to study and get away and just focus on his school. Now, something that I found was really weird here, which kind of adds to the whole, you know, like, in love with the sibling vibe, is that before Yuki left, 
He stole one of Izumi's panties and took it with him to the study camp. Now, why? Why would he do that? I can't think of any sane reason why he would do that, but then again, I don't think Yuki was sane at the time. <sighs> okay, you guys keeping up so far? Oh man. Now, let's fast forward to days later. It's now January 3rd. The Moto family has returned home. The parents and the elder brother. And they knew that Yuki was at his study camp, so that's why he wasn't home. But what about Azumi? Where was she? Well, it turns out that by the time the family had gotten home, there was a smell emanating from Yuki's room. And he told his parents that it was his pet fish that had died, and that was probably what the smell was. So his parents naturally ignored it at first, and you know, Yuki said he'll clean it when he gets back. But it was something that they just couldn't ignore because the smell was so strong and it was coming and seeping into the entire house. And it got so bad that Yuki's family eventually went into his room and noticed that his fish was alive and well. It was swimming around, it was fine. They then approached the closet and opened it up. And that's when they discovered four bags full of human body parts. The family immediately called the police and suspected that it was Yuki, obviously. And once this news got out that brother of a famous family of dentists had murdered his own sister, oh man, there was newspapers about it, there was headlines on TV everywhere. It was basically the talk of the town. There were all kinds of rumors that were spreading around, some of them were true, some of them were just plain old false. Now, even though Yuki confessed to the crime right away after his parents confronted him and called the police, he was obviously guilty, but his family hired a defense attorney and spent a lot of money trying to get the best one they possibly could to defend Yuki and try to prove his innocence at least to some degree. And basically what the attorney was trying to do was say that Yuki was mentally unstable and incapable of making, you know, sound decisions at this time and therefore he shouldn't be tried as a sane person. And it just baffles me that this is Azumi's family, you know, her parents that are defending their son. I mean, I get it, it's their son, but it's also their daughter. I mean, I don't know, there's just, you know, it's, it's punishment and he needs to, he needs to be punished for what he has done. Okay, let me put it this way. I understand that, you know, every parent, you know, hopefully loves their daughter or their son, no matter what, but what if it wasn't your son? What if someone else's son had done that to your daughter? Then you probably wouldn't feel so right of the fact that they are trying so hard to defend him. Then it would seem pretty apparent that that's probably not the right thing to do. Now, the psychiatrist that the attorneys got to examine Yuki did have this to say. When the murder took place, he didn't have the mental capacity to tell right from wrong. Due to this, even though he mutilated the body, he was criminally insane and therefore was not capable of being held legally responsible for his actions. Now this, like, I get it. He's not all there and he obviously has issues. He has to have issues to do this to another person, but still he needs to pay for his crimes at the same time. And this is a tactic that a lot of defense attorneys will use to get their clients on a lesser charge. Prosecutors, however, had a different idea. They figured that Azumi and Yuki did have, you know, some kind of rivalry going on between the two which I think is pretty clear. Yuki didn't like Azumi, and Azumi didn't like Yuki. They were polar opposites, and they were very different people. Azumi had dreams to become something different than her entire family. Meanwhile, Yuki only wanted to do what his family did. And so, they fought, and it got bad. And eventually, someone was killed. Eventually, when the trials were all concluded, Yuki was charged with the murder and desecration of his sister's corpse. In 2008, he was finally sentenced to seven years in prison only. I know we always talk about this, guys. It's 
ridiculous the amount of time that criminals get for murder and just assault on people, women, minors. It's it's ludicrous. It's insane. I'm a very big advocate that the the punishments need to be harsher for these criminals or they will just keep happening. However, the uh, Tokyo High Court, they actually did not agree with only seven years because he was criminally insane at the time. They said that because he told such a specific series of events and recounted everything so meticulously, he was at the proper mental capacity to make the right choice from wrong. And so instead of seven years, they upped it to 12 which is better, but still will never compare to the entire life that Azumi was robbed of. And remember, this happened in 2008. So as of now, Yuki is walking around a free man, enjoying life while Azumi can only be missed. And that, guys, is the end of the story. As I've said before, I agree that siblings, brothers, sisters can fight with each other, but there is never and never will be a reason to murder each other. There should never be a reason to murder anybody, to be honest. I feel extremely bad for Azumi because she was just taken so young with such a bright future and, you know, in a way, I have to say this, I do sort of feel bad that Yuki had mentally collapsed to such a point where he could do something so terrible. I, it's just tragic and it's terrible. Anyways, guys, that'll about do it for today's video. Be sure to hug your loved one, your brother or sister if you have one. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, good night.